so let's call that 30 grams so that's 101 concentration good morning uh, today I'm going to describe to you a new table I've been working on this is for gold concentration and um, what I wanted was a machine that I could take to the desert recirculating water supply and to be able to go through 50 to 100 kilograms of say sandy material or tailings um, in an hour or so and it's also for bulk sampling um, nice machine to have if you're trying to determine um, the content of gold in a certain batch of ore or whatever so this table works it, like a combination sluice and shaker. So there's a bump operation. So the bump goes like that. There's a linear motor which drives the table to make those bumps at about uh, six per second. And there's a considerable slope and high water flow rate which uh, acts like a sluice. So there's a combination sluice bump and that moves the um, high grade or the, the high density material down to that port. There's a port right there and uh, a bucket underneath it. So I'll demonstrate the table, but I wanna take you around and show you some of the things I've put into it. Um, I've been working on these tables for what, two years now? And I've gradually been learning um, um, about important details. So this operates on a flexure system. So there's, uh, that's the way the motion is accomplished. The weight of the table itself is about five kilograms. So it's a fairly low weight um, light table. And the flexures are such that the natural frequency of the table is around four hertz, which is lower than the drive frequency which is around six and a half hertz. And that's kind of important. And in another video, I'll probably discuss that. The table is made from half inch Baltic birch plywood. I cut the grooves with a table saw this time. There's no neoprene rubber mat. Um, that saves a lot of work. The, um, this is a tailings tray. It's not quite deep enough and maybe it should have a little more slope, but it works. This is the uh, output port, the high grade port. And uh, really pretty simple to make. It's all made, the rest of it's kind of all uh, quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. After building a bunch of these tables over a couple of years, I've noticed that one of the things that uh, annoys me the most is to try to adjust the level of the table um, in the field. So I've added um, this push-pull system. It's a push, and I'll show you behind it, there's a pull-down bolt, so you can lock it tightly. And to adjust it, you just loosen this, turn the nut, and um, tighten it back up. So here's that push-pull system in a little bit more detail. Loosen, move the nut, retighten. And in the field, uh, two or three minutes, you can have a perfectly leveled up table. Here's how the table is driven. This is a linear motor. There's two neodymium magnets. There's a coil of uh, 24 gauge wire. There's nothing inside of this box except for the connector. And um, that drives the table back and forth like this. There's a bump mechanism here. That bump is a neoprene pad and that uh, quarter inch, sorry, that half inch screw back there. Let me move the camera, better position. So there's a better view of the bump. That's how it works. As I said, I drive this at around six and a half hertz, which uh, 
is the best rate I've found so far. I played with the settings and everything quite a bit. Here's a look at the recirculating water system. This is the high grade bucket. So that goes in there. The bucket goes down in the water like that. This is the tailings bucket. I can adjust this to, so the tailings comes out of here, down this pipe and into there. And this is where the pump is. The pump sits, sits in a bucket and the bottom of the bucket has a 30 mesh filter that prevents junk from getting into the uh, water bar. The pump is just an 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump and I operate it at around 11 volts with a PWM controller. Here's a look at the water system. Just a, this is half inch PVC. There's 30 holes in it. I think it's a number 24 drill. And uh, the holes point a little bit backwards into the miner's moss. The miner's moss just, uh, you know, evens out the flow. It improves the water flow quite a bit. There's a little holder here that holds the pipe in place. That's nice. And the water comes up out of the pump and into there. Here's a look at the flexures. The flexures are um, a material called Gerolite. It's epoxy fiberglass. It's very tough and resilient and it should last a very long time. This time, instead of gluing it, I've uh, used uh, nuts and bolts. These are actually carriage bolts to fasten it to the table, top and bottom. This allows me to take it apart easily and so forth. This is really uh, the best way to do it. Here's the electronics that uh, drive the thing. Um, the power source is this 300 watt hour uh, lithium ion battery. Very nice, easy to charge and so forth, very convenient. And this is a little homemade um, controller box. So this is far more complicated than it needs to be, but I've got a lot of other stuff in here that I wanted to put in it. Anyway, the pump is driven by a PWM controller that is a pot and there's a readout to tell me the voltage. And that allows me to adjust the rate of flow of the water, which is quite nice. And the table moves back and forth by um, this H-bridge switch. That allows me to put current um, through the coil in one direction and then to switch it around and put current through the coil in the other direction. And so that's how I get a strong back and forth motion. Um, this is a microcontroller that controls that, but it's completely unnecessary. This allows me to uh, play with it to look at different um, exhilaration profiles and so forth. I found that that doesn't make any difference. Just a strong, you know, fully on back, fully on forward against the bump is uh, all you need to make it work. I'm sure you could see from that last segment what was happening was this base was moving back and forth. And that base is from another project. It's totally inappropriate for holding this, but um, it's what I had. I'm gonna make a new base for it that's um, you know much more well suited to this. The base has to be super strong because you're throwing back and forth, you know, five kilograms up here at six hertz slamming it against the bump thing and this has to take the entire reaction so um that needs a lot of improvement um that's okay we'll get we'll get that done
so in that run, I had the table set at the maximum possible um, material rate. So that's really pushing it way beyond its, um, you know, limits. But, you know, I concentrated it down about uh, 10 to one, which might be totally appropriate uh, in the field because uh, you can always take a bucket or two home with you. So let's do a little analytical work here, some measurements. I've got uh, three kilograms of uh, black beach sand. Adding some gold, I'm gonna add about 30 milligrams or so of gold to it. And then I'm gonna run it, th I'm gonna run it through the table. And then I'm going to run the tailings through the table again to see what the ratio of um, the uh, primary uh, extraction to the uh, secondary extraction was and that will give us a good idea of the um, of the extraction rate as a percentage so here's some gold i've run through the table kind of many times it's i haven't bothered to separate it out of the uh, that nasty fine black sand that you get at the beach but anyway i started with about 30 milligrams it should all be here because i haven't lost any um, I keep recycling the tailings too, so uh, I never, it's a closed loop system, I never lose anything. So I'm going to add this bunch of black beach sand, very heavy sand, to this. I hope I didn't lose anything. Doesn't matter, we're going to do a relative test anyway. So um, I'll Thoroughly mix that all up, three kilograms of material, and we'll run it through the table. So, out of three kilograms, that's what's left. And I'll weigh that up and we'll calculate what the concentration ratio is. So there's the concentrates. It's all that like microfine black sand. And this weighs 29 grams. So let's call that 30 grams. So that's 100 to one concentration. So here it is in the pan. You can see the gold, obviously, but let me pan it out just a little bit. This microfine black stuff is incredibly difficult to separate. Also, at this time, let's talk about the gold I used. This is very, very flaky gold. So it's very thin um, sheets of gold, which is kind of the hardest to separate. And um, it's a minus 60 mesh. And that's the finest gold that I can um, find. So if I take it down more than that, believe it or not, I start to lose gold into there because my panning skills with this material suck. So let's pull out the tailing bucket.
and uh, we'll run that through again. I'll put another tailings bucket in here to catch the to catch this. So that's the tailings run through. As you can see, there, there's a fleck of gold, there's another one, but there's very little compared with the number of flecks of gold that we had. In the, there's a flat one. The, the really big, super thin ones tend to be the ones that like to get away, the, flaky, the really flaky ones. Okay, let's take a look at the results. So here's the first extraction. And there's quite a bit of gold still in the black sand. Really a bitch to get it out. And you can see how flaky that gold is. And here's the second extraction. So this is the extraction of the tailings uh, from the first extraction. And um, my guess is that it's on the order of uh, 10%. This machine has been a lot of fun and I think it's got a lot of potential, especially for really fine gold. The problem is, is that I can't buy ultra fine gold to test the machine. So I'd love your help if you're willing to um, send me a tiny amount of very fine gold I'll uh, run it through the machine and make a video of uh, your gold going through this machine. So if you'd like to help, please just leave a comment and I'll get back to you.